70 for, um, oh, what's the date today? Uh, the 27th of October or the 26th of October, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and now, your host, me, today, Chris Petcher. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Google Educast, the show where we talk about the educational applications for Google products, including news, tools, tips and tricks, and, of course, classroom applications. Uh, today, I'll be your host, Chris Betcher from Sydney, Australia. And this week, we have an awesome group, starting with... Juan de Luca from Mexico City. Kevin Brickhauser from Monterey, California. And, Chris, I see your uh, Buzz Lightyear up there in the corner of your screen. Exactly. I'd like to take your Buzz Lightyear and raise you three <laughs> little green men. Oh, oh, the mystic portal awaits. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yes, I found Buzz in a, uh, a, uh, like a jumble sale a couple of weeks ago. I liked awesome. it. All right. Well, um, so big show. Uh, now, I've got a little note here. I, I, I guess it's not really still a school, new school year for you guys, is it? It's well and truly into it now. Um, but yeah. regardless, uh, anyone who's listening to this, you might like to share edreach.us with your colleagues. Um, you can go to edreach.us slash newsletter and pass along the innovations that are shared on EdReach every week. So that's edreach.us slash newsletter. So pass that on, share it around, and um, share the EdReach love. All right, segment number one, in the news. So um, big news this week. Uh, well, not, not that big a news, I suppose, uh, but about renaming docs. There's been some changes to the terminology we use for docs. Uh, who wants to pick up on this one? Um, okay. Oh, I'll talk about it. So uh, yeah, we all they, they, yeah. <laughs> so they made the the names simpler. They they renamed docs. I think the prop the the name before was documents. Now it's just docs. Yep. Um, for the just for the for the regular uh, documents. Spreadsheets was renamed sheets, and presentations was renamed slides. Yeah. Um, that makes it easier. Uh, easier to remember, shorter. Plus, be, uh, besides changing the name, they also added it on the Chrome Web Store. Yeah. I think it's a good move. Um, I know there was a lot of confusion whenever I'd say to people, uh, open a, like, go to your docs. It was, like, docs was the generic name for the whole collection, but it was also yep. the name for the word processing bit, and so there was confusion there. Mm. And so now I'm, I'm, you know, I sent an email out to all my staff the other day and said we're, we're changing the way we talk about this stuff. You know, from now on, when I say drive, I'm talking about the whole thing. When I say docs, I'm talking about the word process a bit. Um, you know, and then I think slides is certainly a lot easier to say than Google presentations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the key one right there. Yeah, yeah. and I, th I think too, just calling them like Google slide. Uh, Google presentations or Google spreadsheets, it just ended up sounding really a bit self-serving to Google. Like it was just, it's like referring to it as Microsoft Word all the time instead mm -hmm. of just Word. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really pleased with the new uh, the naming. I think it's a much better idea. Yeah, and they also changed the logos. So that was a bit confusing because the drawings were yellow and presentations uh, were red. Yeah. Well, they uh, were. So they switched them they around. They were yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, it, at first it was a, a bit confusing, but now sheets. I mean slides. Sorry, is are yellow and uh, drawings are red. Yeah. Cool. No, I think it's a yeah. good move. Yes, Google has been. Uh, they're they're naming convention challenge. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> they do. I mean, the yeah, whole thing with like all Google in the same apps. room at the same time and talk this stuff through. I know. <laughs> but they seem to be uh, working on it, and they recognize that it's a problem. But uh, this is going to help a lot, especially slides is so much better than presentations. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, moving on, number two on our list here is uh, Google Maps is now trekking into the Grand Canyon. Um, and I'm not sure who put this on. It might have been Fred, and he's not here. But um, I took a quick look at the article, and uh, they've got the little backpack units now with the, the sort of the camera, the camera ball that sits above their head um, in the backpack. Uh, and then Kevin's sharing his screen there. Excellent. Um, and I think so, Chris, if you click on my click image, on yours, the yep. broadcast will see this screen. Yep, that's what I see now. Wow, you got a lot of buttons in your toolbar. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, wow. So yeah, so there's a little photo there. You can see the two uh, the two fellas there from Google uh, hiking through the Grand Canyon with the the cameras on the big blue balls above their head there. Um, <laughs> And I that think, is you know, so cool. It, it's a great idea, yeah. but I mean, the bigger picture is obviously that they're taking this technology mobile and they're going to take it into all sorts of interesting places. So, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, you know, you guys probably know I was on the Barrier Reef and that was the same week that they announced that they were doing the underwater tours through the Barrier Reef uh, on, on uh, Google Street View, which is quite a bizarre concept. Um, <laughs> but now that this technology is mobile like this, uh, I think it's going to open up some really interesting places we can go. We really can map the whole world. Exactly. Uh, the cool thing is you can see that he's controlling this with his Android. Mm -hmm. That is just yeah. Now, so speaking awesome. of which, I don't know whether you follow the rumors or not, but the, uh, the Google is supposed to be announcing some new products this week, and one of them is yeah. rumored to be a new uh, Nexus phone. And I don't know how much credence you give the rumors, but one of the sites I looked at... Um, so if I unclick you, Kevin, is that how I get control back to normal? Yeah, just yeah, unclick and then it, it'll control right. whoever's speaking. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the sites I looked at had a, a sort of a, a leaked photograph of the new Nexus phone, which is supposed to be made by LG rather than um, Samsung. Yep. LG. Mm -hmm. But one of the interesting specs on it was a 360-degree view camera. Or is it maybe it was a 180 degree view camera. But, but just from reading the specs, it almost mm -hmm. looked like you were able to take these sort of wrap around photographs and I'm just wondering if that's the sort of the opening of the door for allowing uh, some crowdsourcing of some of this street view stuff. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, crowdsourcing uh, buildings as well, getting uh, maps, street view inside buildings. Yeah. I don't know, that'd be cool. I, I know, um, do either, either you guys have a GoPro camera? Uh, no, I'm uh, waiting no. for the Hero 3 to be released in a couple of yeah, weeks. Yeah, <laughs> I've had one since the beginning. It is just such a great camera. It does have that 180-degree uh, lens. It's useful in a lot of applications, not all applications, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, if you're yeah. into the... Uh, the um, they're promoting the Hero 3 at the moment, which is not quite released, but the, uh, the right. promotional video for it is awesome if you get a chance oh, to watch it. It's just yeah. stunning. It's and speaking great. speaking of rumors that you also I also read that Android 4.2 was coming. Mm -hmm. and, it's supposed to be, yeah. And I I noticed one of the updates. Uh, they said it could be signing in with different users. Multi so users. Guess, that's going to be yeah. huge for shared devices. Exactly. Really? That's the first thing I thought. Yeah. Um, just managing uh, different users with the same device. Because, I mean, at first, the, all, all tablets and all smartphones were thought to be personal devices, but yeah. now it gives you the possible, well, still rumors, but I'm looking forward to that. Well, I heard those rumors as well, and that's, it's, it's also going to be good for, like with my Nexus 7, it's uh, connected to my personal vanilla Gmail account. So I can't uh, edit documents that are shared with my apps for EDU account because I can't switch users but now I should be able to use both. Yeah. So that's exciting. <laughs> Talk about yourselves for a moment. I just need to take this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure thing. So what do we have next, Juan? Um, after that we'll we had... For Windows 8. Right. Um, so they, they created a little site that's, that was called Get Your Google Back. Yep. So you would, a lot of users apparently installed Google 8 and felt a bit lost. Where's my Google search and where's Chrome? So um, they created a site, uh, announced it in their blog, and even created a short video on how to um, add your Google back. Mm. So do we have the link for that? Show. Yeah, it'll be in the show notes. Let's see here. Because uh, I think I have the video. So I can... Let me share Share my screen. Okay. Does it bug you guys that the, the big three, Apple, Microsoft, Google, uh, seem to have this sort of cold war between each other where they don't actively allow each other on each other's platforms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I just think it's so childish because ultimately the users are going to do it anyway, like you know, like this to you know get your Google back. So you can run yeah. this stuff on Windows, but just it just I find it well, I'd, I'd like make to it say so you know, in Google's defense, they actually are pretty good about letting other platforms work on their tools. Like you sure, can no, set, Google are good about it. It's Apple and Google's Microsoft. Google's good about well. it. You can <laughs> set your default search in the Unibar to be Bing. I think that's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it might be, you know, some antitrust <laughs> proactive protection of their own covering sure. their own asses, but um, I don't know. I, th I think Google is is the most democratic of the three. Uh, oh, absolutely! By a long shot. By a long shot. The article they, I read about this want... Google Apps, the Google Apps for Windows 8 business. Um, in, if you read the article, it goes through and tells you all the things that are defaulting to Microsoft services. Apparently, in um, in the EU, in the European Union, they they release a version of the software that puts you into a ballot system, uh, yeah. which sort of randomly assigns you a browser. As the default. Hmm. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> can you see? I my think screen? what I think most uh, is funny about that, though, is is I mean, uh, they say that most people never change the defaults, and I I kind of I've never been able to understand why because it's such a simple thing to change a default, but it's true. Most people just accept exactly what's in front of them and never yeah. think about changing it. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, how many people do we have to tell? Are you using Internet Explorer? <laughs> and they are, and that's why it's not working. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, but at least now people in Windows 8 um, have a little tutorial on how to get their Chrome and their search back. I do get, I, I have to say I'm excited about Windows 8. I haven't, I haven't played with it yet, but I'd really like to get, yeah. get a chance to try it out. Our uh, IT person at our school is really excited about it. She, she likes it a lot. Really, yeah. yeah. I've heard but lots of it, reports from it looks great to it's super confusing, so I don't know what yeah. to believe. <laughs> yeah, I've right. also heard mixed reviews. Um, they like the Surface hardware. They don't like Windows RT. Well, they say the, the store is lacking. Like a mm -hmm. lot of apps, even Twitter and Facebook apps are not, are not there yet. So. No. Yeah, if you don't have Twitter and Facebook, that's uh, that's yeah. a problem. In Microsoft defense, it's been a publicly released product for you know less than 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's been beta for Man. months and mm -hmm. months. Yeah, yeah. It is kind of hard to fathom. Yeah. And the thing yeah. is, I mean, Apple's App Store launched with not that many apps in it. Well, didn't have an App Store at all in the, in the beginning. Um, right. Google's Play Store released not with many apps to start with. So, I mean, it'll all grow over time. The the bigger question is, you know, at which point does becoming the third player in a mature market sort of work against you to the point where you really can't catch up? Yeah. Um, well, anyway, uh, yeah. uh, interesting times. Um, did, did Just while we're talking about tablets, I mean, I know this is not the Apple show, but is there anything about the release of the iPad mini this week that is relevant in the Google world or not? Nope. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, it's it's too expensive. I don't know, Juan. How much, you're, how much you're is the it in, ADE in the group? What do you think? I, I know that's why I can't I can't say much <laughs> on air. But if you right. click that button on the top left, I can tell. No, maybe after the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I, I do have mixed feelings and. Um, I, I think the iOS platform is more mature and their store has uh, more apps, especially for education. A lot of app developers have seen a lot of uh, potential and they've gone into schools. The actual product, I think, is too expensive. Mm. Um, it's kind of interesting because I think if they'd have, if they'd have, where they've come in on the pricing, I think has given Google and uh, you know whoever wants to, whoever else wants to play in this space Microsoft with the RT and well, not so much mm -hmm. the RT but like it's given a whole bunch of the low end manufacturers at least another twelve months of breathing room yep. to, to mm -hmm. get their acts together because had my, had Apple come in at say I don't know two ninety nine or you know two fifty or something like ridiculously affordable it just would have mm -hmm. totally sucked the oxygen out of the air for every other tablet manufacturer. 
you know, they it's like, well, <laughs> you know, there will always be that handful of people that go and say, I'm going to buy Google no matter what, or I'm going to buy, you know, um, mm. Kindle no matter what. But for the so, vast majority of people who are looking for a cheap tablet, if they could choose between those three, they're probably going to go with the Apple tablet. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a question for you guys, though. Um, we're kind of in a conversation right now of uh, implementing a BYOD program, bring your own device, or probably the other option would be one-to-one -one iPad. And uh, iPad would certainly be one of the devices if we implemented a BYOD. That would be one sure. that, that would be an option that we would recommend. Because it's a good device. I love my iPad. It's great. Um, but are there iPad apps that are not available on other platforms that would lend one to go one-to-one -one versus BYOD, one-to-one -one with iPads? Um, well, Chris, you're, you're in iPad school, right? Or uh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm in the midst of planning an iPad rollout trial for next year uh, with a oh, possible okay. intention of being BYOD device, uh, BYOD the year after. But that's mm -hmm. still up for conjecture. We're a BYOD school, and and we're a we're an Apple school. So most of our kids bring OI, iOS devices, anyways, and sure. uh, mostly iPads. From fourth grade on, it's a BY, it's BYOD. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't stipulate any device; they can bring whatever they like, and many of them are choosing for iPads. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so teach, but teachers aren't. Mandating specific apps that are only available in the uh, no. iOS App Store. No, um, I think. Well, at least uh, you know the 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 main the core would be Google Docs. Now that mm -hmm. Chrome works uh, quite well there, and yeah. then from there, using uh, apps that everybody can can get into, like Evernote and. Um, mm. And all the other apps that work with Google Drive, uh, Lucidchart, and right, um, you know, for an alpha, alpha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, at school here, so, I was speaking to recently. Their their policy, I suppose, is you know you have to have a device that does these five things. It has to um, be able to read and write to office style documents, Word spreadsheets, and presentations. Um, and it has to be able to uh, open and read um, PDFs. It has to be able to access our learning management system. Uh, it has to be able, I forget what the other two things are, but there were the five things. And it says, if your device can do those five things, we don't care what it is. Is and the Nexus that's, 7 that's fit that really first criteria? Um, to be able to open uh, doc types? Yeah. Uh, well, you can open them in Google Drive. Okay, so but you can open yeah, them in I mean, Drive, right? That, that's sufficient? Yeah, I would think yeah. so. Interesting. I think it's just saying that if a teacher asks you to, I don't know, write an essay, um, then you've got to be able to have a tool that can produce a text document. Chris, can you send me those those five criteria? Uh, yeah, I'll have to find them. They're stored somewhere. I'll if you get a chance. <coughs> sure. No that would be really useful because I, I like that that yeah. uh, that framework. So one out of the kids, yeah. out of, you said you're in Apple school mainly, and kids are mainly yeah. bringing uh, iOS devices. Is there anyone who's stepping outside of it and bring something else? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of kids who are... We, we don't have Chromebooks in Mexico yet. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, they will be here soon. So, right. um, some are breaking Windows devices. And, right. um, That's great. Maybe, maybe a few are bringing Androids. Um, yeah, but it's also a fashion thing. It's <laughs> uh, We're a private school, and we have mostly wealthy students... Yeah. And it's so sh it's social status, I think, also, right. to bring Apple products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the geek cred is all about <laughs> Linux. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our coding yeah. geeks that just love the fact that they're bringing in their own hand-built Linux machines. Oh, um, that's cool, too. That's another reason I, I, I want to shy away from one-to-one -one and saying, hey, this is the company that we endorse and you all have to pay to them for their product. Mm. It's interesting and from Google's perspective. I don't know whether Google's prime objective is to sell more hardware or get more people using their, their software. 
because if if the goal is the latter, if the goal is to get more people using Google Apps and Google Tools, which I assume that really is the the end game for them, right? Then the smartest thing I would think they could do is to make all this stuff work better on every platform, including iOS. And maybe and it's Apple that. that's making it harder. Yeah, they're doing mm-hmm. that. I mean, I, I um, certainly haven't got power. I remember yet. people. You know, I don't know if I'm violating an NDA, but. Um, <laughs> They they're admitting iOS is not going anywhere, and From they're Google. supporting. Oh, that, yeah, I don't think that's a big surprise there. Yeah, It'd just be nice it. to get some parity. So, I mean, I, I there's no doubt that Google Drive and all the Google stuff is so much better on Android, like by yeah. a factor of lots. Um, you know, if if we can get that Google stuff working as well on iOS, uh, I don't know. It's very different, very different um, environment you'd be working in then. It's gotten better since the Drive app came out. Definitely, definitely. Give yeah. me multi-user and I'll be really happy. Give me Well, you ha- that's the that's the difference between iOS and Android is you can totally. do multi-user on totally. the iOS and not on on the Android. On my yeah. iPad, I can access both of my all of my Google accounts. I can sign out, but on my Nexus 7 I cannot. What? You can No, but you can like you can sign into the device. You can sign into, into on, on Chrome the, or into Drive or where? On, the and, on Android, on the you can sign into multiple Google accounts and just seamlessly switch between them. On the iPad? No, on, on, the, on Nexus. Nexus 7? Far superior experience on Nexus 7, yeah. All right, I need you to show me that. But go to your settings, go to accounts, sign into multiple Google accounts. Because it's totally working down. for me on the iPad, but it's not working for me on my Nexus 7. Okay, we need to talk because mm. I can't make it work on the iPad. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we will have a little off-camera off, okay. off, uh, off uh, discussion about that. Um, <laughs> moving on then. Now, you guys talked about your 20% time, did you, or not? Yeah, no, one and didn't. I had an awesome 20% time hangout. That, that, uh, and thank you so much for joining me with that one. That was, that was really fun, and it's uh, on YouTube now. It's archived. And so if you're thinking about starting a 20% time program at your school and your class, watch this video. Yeah, I, I really love your presentation. Uh, do you have you're you're gonna make a video on the presentation, or you're gonna upload it as? Yeah, like, well, it's I mean, notes? our hangout's already up, but I'm gonna yeah. try to do a condensed version of that presentation, just mm-hmm. to do a ten minute version of it. I uh, okay. was peddling your twenty percent time stuff pretty hard when I was in China a couple of weeks ago. Um, we were talking a lot about. The value of play and the value of twenty percent time type projects, uh, and that's why I tried to Skype you into uh, to China, but uh, the audio quality was horrible, so yeah, it didn't quite work. But um, I certainly uh, showed some of your videos that your kids did to the group there, and um, super impressed by what you've done with them. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, moving on then to our that seems to be all the in the news for this week. So uh, segment number two, our tool shout out. And Kevin, you've put in something here about questions in YouTube. Tell us about yeah, so that. It's it's something we talked about theoretically in YouTube. They launched this beta program called Questions, mm-hmm. and uh, I've never seen a video that actually used them before. So I just started playing with them with uh, some of my grammar videos. Let me. So yes. what it is, if I if I understand it right, is you can be watching a video and it will pause at a certain point and pop up like a multiple choice question or something, and you can yeah, answer the and, question and then move on. And then yeah, you can't move on until oh hold on a second, you can't move on until you've actually gotten the question correct. Oh, right. So let me just show you that example. Where is this? Um, my your, your, and your video. <laughs> That's a famous one. Here we go. So then you just embed this question here, and you, as you, from the front end when you're watching it, you get this question: Can you replace the first "your" with "you are"? Well, yep. if you click no, you get a hint: you are all set 
to train? Does this work? And so then the hint, the correct answer is yes. And the video continues. Oh, that's pretty cool. So how do you set that up? Yeah. Like Let me show you on the on, on the back end how it works. If you're so, if I click edit, um, there's now a tab here that's called questions. Oh, yeah. And they work a lot like annotations. So you decide where the question belongs at what time, right here. Um, you ask the question, you give possible answers, and you select the correct answer, and then you provide a hint right here. Nice. And it's multiple choice is the only question type at this stage? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, um, the real bummer, though, is it doesn't work on mobile. Oh, really? That yeah, just, just like yeah. annotations don't work on mobile, and we're obviously going mobile. Every that's the where the trend is. So, you know, I really hope they enable this in mobile. Otherwise, I don't know if I'm going to waste my time with it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know what also doesn't work in mobile? Uh, linking to other videos. So your other yeah. writing felonies, you know, link. Uh, that I know it's, in, that, it's frustrating. Yeah. It's driving me crazy, and it's not. It doesn't seem like it. It's complicated to make that work. I mean, I'm not an engineer, but <laughs> I don't know. How hard can that be? <laughs> how, how, how? Yeah. How hard could it be? It would be interesting to be able to have it so that um, it asks a question, and depending on your answer, it throws you into either the, the continuation of the same video or to a new video. I'd well, that's that. that's what I did with one of my other videos, the there, there, and there video using annotations and if you get the question wrong it takes you to a you fail video <laughs> and then oh, so you, pretty, but you can throw to a different video yeah you can using annotations right okay. not, not, not using questions. the question feature just using annotations so you can kind of you know rig it up yourself right you guys talked about that last week right yes yes we did we, we showed your video it was oh, cool. the you failed was kind of harsh but um <laughs> <laughs> no, it was harsh actually kind of guy. <laughs> it was uh, actually a funny. You movie. are lost. <laughs> yeah, you're lost. <laughs> Try again. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, you're facing east. Day. You see a door. <laughs> but I actually think. I mean, I can't believe more people aren't using this, and and maybe it's the fact that uh, mobile is the issue. But this is the killer app for educational videos it makes them interactive and yeah it's just multiple choice but at least you're you're getting the the viewer involved more actively involved nice. well, more people aren't using it because it takes forever I mean you probably spent a lot of time just first uh, thinking about your strategy so more or less this video goes here if they answer right here they answer wrong so oh, that took it forever <laughs> it took a whole day to build that thing and and exactly the, uh, the questions the built-in questions apps doesn't take that long at all no that's super no. easy yeah yeah and have you tried TED Ed embedding it into TED Ed I haven't yet I've I've uh, I know what you're talking about and that uh -huh. looks promising as well because um, I, I haven't tried it yet. I mean, I, I know it exists, but uh, it's the same kind of question of um, multiple choice questions. I think you can have open-ended questions there also. I think, I think sure. so too, yeah. yeah. Um, but that looks interesting because I think they can submit their answers at the end. Right. So right. maybe we can look at it so cool. other, in another show. Okay, well, segment number three, moving on then, is uh, Ask a GCT, and in this segment we normally uh, get readers or listeners or viewers, whatever we call them these days, <laughs> the, the people who previously used to be known as the audience, um, to uh, write in with a problem, and uh, I don't think anyone has, so I put a problem in this week. This is a problem I had yesterday uh, with a year three class, grade three class. Um, so the problem is I, I had a, I had, um, I'll, I'll read it, I had a problem this week with a shared Google Sheet. I'm teaching them to use a spreadsheet. So I shared a sheet, I shared it with anyone on the web, uh, with my grade three students as view only, and told them to open it and then select file, make a copy so they have their own copy to work on. Some of them could do it as expected, but about half the class didn't have the option to make a copy. Most of the options in the file menu were grayed out. 
Now, I was completely perplexed by this um, because they had the same sheet, the same sharing, and they were getting different results. We tried it on different browsers, we got different results. So uh, tell me, oh, wise GCTs, any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen well, this happen before? I've got a question. Mm -hmm. Were some of these students logged into a Google account and others not? Mm, no, they all, because... Um, I actually sent them a uh, a doc with the instructions, and the doc had a link to go to the spreadsheet. So they all had to get to the doc first, and so they had to. They were all logged in. They were all logged in. They all had. They went to their Gmail to, in order to get the doc in order to find. Uh, the spreadsheet. Okay, well then I don't have a really great answer. For that. <laughs> it looked like some of your students were not logged in, and others were. Yeah, that was my first thought. Um, and, uh, didn't seem to be the case. I've, I think I've seen the file and some of the menu options there grayed out mm -hmm. before, but just reloading the page would yeah. fix it. Um, really? okay. And it, it's happened once or twice, but if you open it in different browsers, it's like refreshing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. One okay. thing you might want to try is instead of having them make a copy of a sheet, making a template. Yeah, okay, and, that's not a bad idea. And linking to the template, because that automatically makes a copy. Just by using the template, it automatically makes a copy in their drive. That's a good idea. I might try that. Um, but I, you know, I, I just, I, I, yeah, like Juan, I've, I've seen the, the grayed out mm -hmm. edit tools mm. and uh, hitting refresh or, you know, sometimes just a restart is what it takes. Mm. Okay. Are you using Internet Explorer? <laughs> uh, they actually were. It was a year three, grade three class, and they, our kids, funnily enough, they use the Microsoft stuff when they're in kindergarten, year one and year two, which is ridiculous because it's so much harder for them. And then they get to grade three, which is a different part of the school. And I, I okay, okay, now from now on, we're using Google Docs only. Um, but a lot of them are still in that habit, so they still automatically go to Explorer. Hmm. But yeah, the ones who are having the problem, I said, okay, close that, let's open it in Chrome and see how that works. And it didn't seem to make a difference. So. Okay, uh, another theory. Um, in your school, well, I, I guess you can enable docs outside the domain, right? Because in our school, mm -hmm. uh, that that's blocked. Okay. And um, are all those students in the same uh, domain or sub... Yep. Organization. Yeah, we, are, we only have one domain. One. one no, domain. You only have one. one. Uh -huh. And you have mail enabled. Have one. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So. so okay. No. That's all right. I'll uh, I'll Work. deal with that. But actually, you've just said something that made me think of a second question. I'm going to throw at you guys, and that is: Is it possible to? Uh, we've we've got a domain, uh, a Google Apps domain, uh, which teachers and students are all part of. Um, we had an incident this week where the kid was doing something a, a bit inappropriate with mail, and a teacher said to me, "Can we can we suspend them off email for a while?" And I said, "Well, yeah, I can, but it, it will also suspend them off all their Google Docs, and we're using them in class, so the kid won't be able to do any work." So we decided to not suspend them. But I'm just wondering, is it possible to turn off a kid's mail without turning off their Docs? Because I've only seen the option to disable the whole account. Yeah, if you're, you've got dashboard capabilities, you should be able to turn off his mail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you would need to uh, set up a new sub organization and so, put him in there. Just ah, uh, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's so what I think. Rachel Cheney was the one who talked about this when we were up at, at uh, Mountain View. They've got a bad bad boy list or something, right? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so you make a new sub organization and you have new rules for that, and then you move the user into that organization temporarily. Yeah. Right. Okay, that makes sense. It's more work than I want to do, but it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. But if you have it set up just for the bad boys, like Kevin was saying, it's not such a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, I'll look into that. Good to know. Okay, segment number four, tips and tricks. Uh, and one, you, uh, you hit us with a really good tip or trick uh, just before the show started. Tell us about that one. Okay. Um, so if you have undo send enabled in your email, um, 
and that if you don't have it enabled you should <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's it's awesome i've found myself sending emails without attachments and to the wrong person and you know and you or angry emails that i, <laughs> I have just <laughs> yeah i need about a 3 hour time out on those <laughs> <laughs> Um, but if you have undo send uh, set up and you send an email, you can have it set up for 10, 20, 30 seconds. But if you want to send it right away, you send the email and then you click on inbox and the email will be sent right away. So that is an awesome tip. It. That is yeah. a really cool tip. I, didn't, I don't know how you work that out, but that's really good to know. By accident, because, <laughs> because I clicked and I saw that the undo uh, disappeared, the undo word. Yeah. So I said, oh, okay, the, then they must get it uh, before, or because it's not giving me the choice anymore. And then I tried it with somebody sitting next to me, and yeah, it, it sends it right away. You did. So you've actually done that because that would have been the test I'd done. I'd be setting it to a yeah. high value like 30 seconds or something and then send it to someone sitting next to me and, right. and seeing if they did actually get it within the 30 seconds. And, yeah. and you've done that and it happened. I, I did it with 10 seconds. Right. And they got it before that. Like nice. In less than three. So yeah. Well, that's and one, really that's, I mean, that's just genius to <laughs> um, play with the software that way, you know, to just experiment with it. That's how you learn this stuff. Yeah, and uh, I, you know, I wonder how many Googlers don't know about that <laughs> functionality. Probably. Well, not. if they're watching, I'm sure they, a lot of them are. So <laughs> now they do. They do now, now they do. Yeah. That's a great tip. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, the second tip I've got a little tip um, that I learned this week. I didn't realize this that if you're, um, we all know that if you're on a page of if you're on a web page in Chrome and you see something that interests you in that page and you want to find out more about it, you can highlight it with your mouse and right-click it and say, Google this, which is kind of handy. Uh, but the other way you can do it too is if you select a piece of text and simply grab your mouse and drag it up to the, uh, to the, um, the tab, tab bar and just release it on the tab bar, it'll actually do that as a search for you, which I didn't realize. Um, and of course, if you've got a link in a page and you want to open in a new tab, well, I mean, there are shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts for that, but um, you can also just take a link and drag the link to the toolbar as well, and it will also open in a new tab. So I thought both of those were kind of useful. Very cool. Um, and, and there was a little keyboard shortcut I've discovered lately that I'm using a lot. I used to have a plugin in Chrome to do this, and I found I don't actually need the plugin anymore, and that is when I want to send, an, uh, send a page link to someone as an email. So I might be reading an article somewhere and I think this is something that someone else needs to read, so I want to send them the URL. Um, mm -hmm. And there was a little Chrome extension that would do that. But on the Mac, if you just go uh, Command-Shift-I, it will automatically, without any uh, extensions or anything, just um, fire up a new email with that link uh, as an embedded link in the email. Is hmm. that using the mail client? Uh, it uses um, Gmail. Mm -hmm. Command Shift I. Yeah, I on, just tried it. It works. Yep. Mm -hmm. And strangely enough, there doesn't seem to be an equivalent in Windows Chrome. It's not working for me. No. Uh, do you have? You know, you can set up Google Email to be your. Yeah, uh, I do. Your mail. Yeah, is it set up? I think so. Okay. Okay, maybe I don't. I I thought I did, but maybe I don't have it set up. Yeah. Maybe you have mail. I think that might be it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Command Shift I That's on the Mac really seems cool. to do it, and uh, it will generate a new email with the links, which is handy. But yeah. again, strangely, there doesn't seem to be an equivalent on Windows um, hmm. anywhere. Hmm. In fact, let me, um, let me add Kevin, to that. If you, Kevin, if you look in your file menu uh, in Chrome, you should see uh, just above the print option down the bottom there, it says Email Page Location. Yeah. Shift Command Email I. Page Location. Yeah. Mm hmm. So it is in a menu as well, but it, oh, it's that's just cool. a keyboard shortcut. Oh, now, mm, file, email, page, location. It's not really working for me. No. no. Maybe I need to turn on mail. You have a ghost in the machine, I think. Yeah. But I, I, let me just add another one of those keyboard shortcuts, very similar to what you're talking about. If you're in a, on a website and you want to quickly select the URL on a Mac, maybe you already know about this, but Command-L, Automatically selects oh, okay. the URL 
Hmm. Uh, so that you can quickly, you know, change it or copy it or do whatever you want with it. I didn't know that. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. I just learned that from following Alice Keeler on Twitter. She she posted that a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So but if you want to open I don't a know if you guys, window. you know, I, I always end up like double clicking and then triple clicking to get that selected, you yeah. know. This command L is so much faster. Nice. Huh. So if you, want a new, if you want a new tab with the same thing in it, you could just go command L, command C, command T, command B. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You, you know what? Really I, silly about <laughs> you know what I liked about uh, clicking, well, dragging the link to the to the tabs. That when you open a new link with Command Click, it opens on a on a new tab. But then it's the last tab or the one to the right or of where uh, you are. You can but put it anywhere you want. Link, exactly. I, I, I um, guess. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And does it Is activate that, right? that tab? Ah, it does. Yeah, you can put it wherever you want. Does it activate it? I'll tell you in three, two, one. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Pick it up for cool. one. Doing the experiment. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. Well, we're going to move on. Um, so some good little tips there. Um, sometimes we have some uh, add-ons we talk about in uh, Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> Fred or Sean might have put in this in, so if you guys don't want to talk about it, we can we can move on past that one. Well, I, I don't know anything about the command the Plants vs Zombies Chrome plugin, but I do endorse the game. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe it's very addictive. I've been avoiding it, it on that basis. It's very addictive. <laughs> All right, um, GeoGebra app now apparently yeah. works with Drive. It does. Yeah. Um, I tried that one, so. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with yep. you guys. Oh, I've just realised, uh, Kevin. I'd, I'd selected you, so you've been on the output screen for all this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure the audience <laughs> loves that. <laughs> so, Juan, you're on the output screen now. Okay, good. Can you see me now? Yep. Okay. So, you pronounced it GeoGebra. Uh, or, I've heard all sorts of pronunciations. GeoGebra is generally what I hear people say, but they could be okay. totally wrong. Geogebra. Geogebra. Oh, it's all okay. I can't. Doesn't matter. Um, and funny, it asks for permission every time you open it because I've opened it several times. But okay, it likes to make sure that it has your permission. Um, so this little app is very handy for math teachers. Oh, cool. I'm not a math teacher. But I know they struggle when they are trying to find some really cool things to do with their, with their students. So um, basically start with, with a chart where you can, you can uh, graph, um, for example. And this is I all do? just running in the browser now? Yes, it's an <sighs> app running in the browser. Awesome. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to create a couple points here, here. Um, you can put a line in between, let's see, segment. So it's really cool, really cool for measuring. And yeah. on the left, you can see that it's creating the, the points. It gives you the, what are those called? The 0, 3, the coordinates. Yeah. Um, and then how long the segment is. Oh, that is so, so cool. So that is very cool, but I'm going to show you something even cooler. Um, you can actually go to insert an image, you can, which is very strange. It's an, under edit, but I'm going to choose a file. Let's see, downloads. Mm, an airplane. Just so you can see my, my airplane there, right? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm going to zoom in. So, ooh, wait, there. I don't know what you're going to do, but I know it's going to blow me away. <laughs> I'm going to create a shape. <laughs> I'm going to create a parallelogram. Or, I don't know. I'm going to create something. A polygon. Uh, from, a polygon, yeah, from E to F, G, and then here. Oh, uh, and it's going to calculate the area, isn't it? Yes, oh. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, is there, no is there a limit to how many points you can have? 
Um, is that why it's not letting you create H? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Okay. I need it to be more specific, and then I, and then close it on, on E. And yes, it does give me the, the area of the pentagon. <laughs> of the polygon, sorry. That's yeah. pretty cool, no? Yeah. <laughs> Where's oh, it that's up very the scale cool. From? Can, can you change the scale? I mean, it says 2.1, but 2.17 what? Um, I guess it's using the scale of... It's all relative, so you can, yeah. you can create your own scale. Right. But it's, they're generic units. Right, that's nice. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're giving you the units here on the, on the grid. You can turn on the grid. It's really cool. I'm not a math teacher, but ah, something else you can do. You can measure angles, so you could uh -huh. you could measure yeah, like yeah. the E I H angle. It's forty eight point two twenty two degrees. You yeah. Put, you Our math teachers use this a the, lot. You can put, put an image of the leaning tower. You can put an image of the leaning tower of Pisa up and have students yeah. figure out what angle the mm -hmm. tower is leaning at. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Um, now, I found two limitations when playing with this, because I was literally playing. It's <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, one, you cannot upload... F well, the, the f you can't save a file if, the, if you insert a very large image. So I've tried with images under one megabyte, and it works. But big ones don't. Okay. And the other thing is that you lose your image <laughs> once you... Like if I... Uh, if I close it, I'm going to save it as airplane. So it saves to Google Drive. Um, oh, of course, it saves straight into Drive. Exactly. Um, let me try Drive. So it should be there at the top. Airplane. I'm going to close it. Leave the page. So you can see it's there at the top. And, of course, since it's integrated with Drive, you can share it. Oh, yeah. You, you can't uh, share it directly uh, there. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, uh, it, <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> um, you can't... It, it works a bit differently than other Google Docs, or, sorry, Google Drive... Uh, Things. Apps. <laughs> I don't know what they're called now. Apps. <laughs> I'm going to call them apps. So... Uh, they work. It, it works differently, but um, yeah, you can share it with with people. So, but now if I open it again, it won't show the airplane. Which is kind of a shame, but at least they they could do all the measurements. You see, I I have my wing here. Right, right. But it's not showing the image. Oh, hmm. That's a shame. Yeah, but I guess I could just insert it again and <laughs> have it there. Definitely, uh, yeah. I noticed you can insert from a webcam there, so you could even get kids holding up things in front of the, the webcam yeah. camera and, and then making all sorts of measurements from that. Right. That's well, you nice. could always just do a screen capture if you wanted to save it. Yeah, and I don't know if you can save it as... Uh, no, it doesn't give you the option. Hmm. Save settings. Oh, I guess you would need to play with it, but... yeah. Copy That's image. Cool. I know some math teachers who will be very excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that. I mean, a lot of math teachers would be familiar with this tool, but what this is doing is just putting it really easily into the kids' hands. Yeah. It's right in the browser. Nice. That's um, nice. I've just added one more uh, Chrome add-on. I just thought I'd throw in today, and that is: has, Have any of you played with Chrome Remote Desktop? No. Uh, I heard about it. Mm, it works awesome. <laughs> So it's just yeah. a Chrome extension. Just search for Chrome Remote Desktop. There's a link in the show notes. Uh, you install it. Um, you don't mean, yeah, you just install the plugin into your Chrome browser on one machine and then in, onto a second machine. And then basically you uh, can remote into one machine from the other. Um, fully Is it pretty fast? Uh, yeah, it's a, a wee bit of lag, but you know, nothing, nothing that would stop you from using it, that's for sure. Is it free? Yep. Completely. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Because I saw I saw your Google Plus post saying you were playing with it, and I I also saw Mark Wagner saying that it there was another app that was four ninety nine. So I was wondering if so there are different apps 
Okay. So oh, one for well, this is this is from Google itself. This is uh, a Google mm -hmm. Mate extension. Um, and this is it's I had not an ADE just friend from of mine website. say to me that uh, you know oh yeah but uh, we've had back to my Mac available for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but I've never made that work. This one I actually got to work, so um, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I, I was sitting at work yesterday, remoting into my home machine and um, moving files around and dropping things into Dropbox and picking them up at work, and so it works great. Right. And it's not just for Chrome OS. You're using it on a Mac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. To access another Mac. Yep, yep. And then I installed it on a Windows machine and did from Windows to the Mac. So, cool. Um, I I like it. It's just just the browser. That's or whatever great. the hell we call Chrome these days. <laughs> <laughs> more naming convention problems. Exactly. <laughs> Certainly more than a browser. Uh, and finishing off then, um, uh, Kevin, I think you've just thrown something in here for classroom application. Cool things that we or others are doing with Google in the classroom. Yeah, You're let me share my screen here. Um, so my latest blog post is about something that I've been doing in my classroom. Um, have you guys heard of this book, Search Inside of Yourself? It's written by a Googler, and uh, he's one of the original Google engineers. And he's also been doing a lot of research on uh, meditation and the looking at the science behind how med meditation can make you generally happier, but also uh, more attentive and able to focus a lot more. And I can't recommend this book enough. It's got the corniest jokes in the world, but <laughs> as you read it, you start to really enjoy them. Um, but one one of the things you're saying is that that we we tend to think of attention, especially with you know diagnosing students with ADD, we we tend to think of his attention as a fixed uh, entity. Either we have it or we don't. But he really uh, lays a persuasive argument that attention can be trained, mm -hmm. and that uh, through simple meditation practices we can train attention. And so I've started a practice in my class where the beginning of class each day we spend 60 seconds in silence and I ask my students to just kind of pay attention to their breath and if their mind wanders um, acknowledge that say hi to that thought that's coming into the mind and just invite it to go away and go back to your breath and uh, we've been doing this every day and you know I kind of thought my st students would protest by doing this because it was kind of a weird experiment and uh, something I was trying to do but I pulled my students after over a month of doing it and uh, the vast majority of them really, they just love being able to have one minute in their busy day where they can just be silent and not looking at a glowing rectangle and uh, just being with themselves. So I just, uh, I invite you all, I posted a video of what it looks like in the classroom, that 60 seconds, I use a bell. How old are and, your kids? Uh, and my students, they just, they really love it for the most part. How old, what, what grade class is this? They're 10th graders, so they're about 15-year-old students. <laughs> wow. I love how you try all this stuff, Kevin. I, you, 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 you <laughs> do so much, uh, it's, I won't call it experiments, but you just try stuff that the rest of us just don't think of. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> mm. Well, it was inspired by this book. I mean, this, this, this book is, is really, really compelling. Yeah. I, I feel like we adults should do it too because absolutely <laughs> yeah it's huge. I, I'm gonna propose it in my office because I think we need a minute of silence in the day. Just turn off the phones. Maybe maybe we'll do it ten minutes. No. Ten minutes even even more powerful. <laughs> but yeah, I you know. know the thing is it's it's nothing new. I mean the the so many cultures yeah. do this. You know, they yeah. have these rituals. But a lot of it's tied in religion, and, and I'm not really a religious guy, and, and so I don't do that. But there's definitely benefit for having some quiet time and, and letting your mind... Well, the just... comments you got there from the kids speak for themselves, really. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah, so yeah, there's, you know, I love this practice, and I look forward to, to it every day. It's such a great time to think or not to think at all in this world where we are just going so fast and always to the next destination and just being stressed. In that one minute, I can really take in the great benefits from just being relaxed and calm. Mm. So nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah, very good indeed. All right, we better wrap this puppy up. Um, some upcoming events. There's uh, something here in the show notes for the Fall Q Napa Valley. I don't know anything about that. Do you? 
Yeah, that's uh, it's it's happening this weekend. Diane Main is up there right now, uh -huh. and uh, I'm going to be up there tomorrow. So if anyone is uh, in the Bay Area, we'll Sean see you is up there, there also. No, what's that? Sean is there uh, also. You know, I haven't heard. I assume he is. He's usually he usually does that. I assume he's there as well. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, and also just a little uh, push here for the Google Apps for Education summits, which have been taking place all over the place. Uh, we've got uh, November 3rd and 4th, one coming up in New England, and then followed, I'm looking at the list here, it's amazing. Um, December 1st and 2nd in New Delhi in India, uh, January 12th and 13th in Hawaii, January 17th and 18th in Sydney, I'm a bit excited about that one. Uh, February 9 and 10 in Tokyo, we've got March 7 and 8 in the Middle East, I'm not sure exactly where that is, um, probably Dubai or something I guess, um, I think and so. then April 2021 in Ontario, presuming Toronto, I should click the link and find out, uh, and then in June 8 and 9 in Hong Kong, so I mean, no matter where you are in the world, there's, there's these things happening all over the place, and of course there's a list of more stuff coming out there, Alberta, Illinois, another one in Australia, Brisbane, Brazil, UK, Texas, North Carolina, Maryland, so uh, it's going to be a busy time for the, uh, the team that are running these events, but if you can get to one, um, all the feedback has been awesome from them. Yep. They are awesome. Yep. They're good events. Uh, well, that about wraps it up for this week. So um, a big thanks to you guys. Thanks, uh, Juan and Kevin, for joining us this week. It's been it's been uh, a slice, as they say. <laughs> um, and to everyone who's listening or watching this show at a later date, don't forget to follow us on at edreachus uh, on Twitter. So that's edreachus on Twitter. And, of course, subscribe to our newsletter at uh, edreach.us slash newsletter. And it's a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcasts, and all the news coming out of EdReach. Um, if you want to contribute something to the Ask a GCT segment, uh, you can shoot us an email there at googleeducast at edreach.us, and we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, to uh, get stumped by it uh, or try and answer it. So thanks again for joining us. You can continue the conversation over at the EdReach Network, and we will see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you. See you. Bye.